if I've been told to talk quickly, so I will. <laughs> My name is Anne Doolis, and I'm fortunate enough to be the executive head teacher of two primary schools, um, St Luke's and Warland. I've been a head teacher for 18 years in four different primary schools, and I'm the national leader of um, education. I'm here today to hopefully convince you that philosophy for children, or P4C as we call it, really does work, and to explain why we would appreciate your help. Both my schools are in Islington, which is a borough of two halves, very rich and very poor. You'll know from the brief that over 50% of children in both schools are disadvantaged. Some children come to school hardly able to speak because either English is not their first language or because they're not exposed to enough language as babies and young children, which impacts upon their success in reading, writing and maths um, in school. My team in both schools, and I know that P4C works, um, because we've seen how philosophical inquiry can get children thinking deeply, listening to other children, and expressing themselves, themselves because older children do it. Um, but none of us are early years P4C <coughs> specialists. Training two teachers at each school would impact on 120 pupils, which is hopefully where you come in. Now, P4C is not part of the national curriculum, therefore it's not statutory. But I know, and my team knows, both teams know, that it's an essential ingredient to facilitating learning for our children. Now, I've actually brought living proof along here tonight, um, just around that corner, that P4C <laughs> does work, and you can ask them some questions in a minute. But I'm literally here with my cap in my hand, and I'm not too proud, actually, because... I'm representing, on the microphones, no it's not one, I thought I'd lost the career in it. I'm representing three, four and five year old children in both my schools, which is actually 180 children. And anything that you can contribute would be most gratefully appreciated. And I'd like to introduce you to Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thanks very much, Anne. That was um, two minutes, 13 seconds. <laughs> uh, I think the last time I tied a head teacher, I lost my bet and got a detention. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, these, are, these are the living proofs. You're going to... Oh, here, oh, right, oh, thank wow. you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, how, how slick was that? <laughs> Um, my job is to manage SAPRE. So SAPRE is the charity that um, does the tra teacher training for philosophy for children, which we call P for C. It shortens things for 60-minute presentations. Um, so we call it P for C. We do that all around the country. Um, and we, so we train teachers. We have a network of, of trainers who do that. Um, now, P for C, philosophy for children, what is it? It's essentially it's a thinking skills, speaking and listening skills program. And, and, and it's based on using philosophical questioning and philosophical inquiry to try and help build those skills um, in school children from the very earliest years, um, so it can start as early as nursery, and it can go right the way up through primary and secondary. And it, by and large, it, it happens, tends to happen in the sort of second half of primary and the early part of secondary. Um, but we want to do it at the earliest years. Now, what's special about philosophy for children? Three things, really. The first thing is that the questions that are, in, in, um, are discussed are philosophical questions. So this is a philosophical question that a nursery or early years child might come to. Can the doll talk, but we just can't hear her? So you, you can imagine that maybe by the time you're 15, the question might have gone on a little bit beyond that point. Um, but that's the sort of thing that they would start with uh, at a young age. So the first thing is they're engaging in philosophical questions which they really get engaged in. There's no yes or no answers. So it's not a question of being right or wrong. It's a question of saying what you think and giving a reason for it. The second thing is um, that the children actually drive these sessions. So they choose the question. The teacher will give them a stimulus, uh, but the children will decide what the question is. And they will even, if they've got competing questions that they want to uh, talk about, they will even vote on that. Third thing is it's done repeatedly, week in, week out, with the same group of children. So they learn a lot about operating as a group. They learn how to respect each other's opinions. They learn how to challenge each other's opinions. And that teaches good skills of collaboration. And it also teaches um, skills of resilience. What we're going to be doing in this project is getting two great trainers, Sarah Stanley, who is probably the leading early year specialist in PFC in the country, and Harriet Goodman, who's disappeared, she's over there, <laughs> she 
Jean works, um, in St. Luke's as an advisor, so they are going to do the training between them. As Anne said, they're going to train 120, sorry, they're going to train four teachers, which will be 120 children. Um, we, and it's going to run for about two years. The cost of doing this is £5,600, um, and anything you can do towards that will be very gratefully received. It works out at £45 per pupil, and what that £45 buys is basically the chance for a child who's coming from a position of disadvantage to have a somewhat better prospect of catching up than the education system gives them at the moment. And that, I think, is something that is worth much more than £45, frankly. If we are lucky enough to exceed our 5,600, um, every 900 pounds extra that we get allows us to train another teacher and another 30 children in another school with high levels of deprivation. So that's what we're about. Um, thank you very much for listening to us.